and welcome to Nasha's Art. Recently we found this adorable abandoned baby sand partridge and I was given the task of looking after it which involved feeding it every few hours and of course sketching it which I very much enjoyed. These sand partridge babies have such long, strong legs and they run very fast. This little one spent a lot of time racing around after me, around the house, thinking I was his mummy. They've also got these mottled brown and yellow ochre and orange coloured feathers, which are great because they live mainly on the ground and need to be camouflaged. To paint this adorable chick, I'll be using the Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolour range and Strathmore watercolour paper. Here's my watercolour palette with a varied mixture of browns, oranges, yellows, reds, blues and greens. And I'll be using a set of three brushes, a thick, a medium and a thin watercolour brush. I'll be using a process of wet on wet which means I'll be adding wet paint to wet paper. So before I wet my paper, I'm just going to target the colours that I need and mix that brown first so that it's ready for the technique I'm about to do. I now take my large mop brush and I'm going to make a larger circle for the bird's head. You can see that it comes out slightly cream here, but it's actually pretty much clear water. And then I'm going to do an even larger circle for the bird's body. And the two circles overlap. I'm going to try tilting the paper in a minute so you can get a better look at that. Head and body. I can now pick up my damp, ready brown colour and add it onto the wet part of the bird's head. And by dabbing it gently, I'm allowing it to spread out and create a sort of mottled, patterned effect. You can see here I'm mixing two different browns, a darker reddy brown and a lighter, more orangey one. This gives a background effect that we can build on later. I'm now working over the body as well. And you can see how I'm dabbing the brush over the wet paper to create that mottled effect. I'm now going to work on the chick's tiny little wing area, still using a mottled dabbed brown effect. I'm going to make sure that its underbelly is light coloured so that we can begin to get a sense of the fluff. Little areas of grey and green can give a semblance of darker shadows and then adding white into the mix gives that real light, cute, sort of fluffy, feathery background layer that we want which will later turn into more clear fluff. This is the base layer and we'll work other layers on top of it. Now the cutest thing about a chick is that it's ever so fluffy. So I'm taking a clean, damp brush and I'm going over the hard edge that the paint has created and I'm blending it so that it becomes softer and fluffier instead of having a hard crispy edge. I'm now going to work in the next layer of fuzzy, fluffy, darker areas. Now it's really important to note that the paper underneath is still damp and that's why when these little dots are added they merge and splurge out to give the sense of fluffy feathers. If these were drawn onto dry coloured paper, they would have sharp edges and wouldn't give the idea of fluff.
using the very fine brush and a light brown and drawing in the shape of the beak, making sure that it's just the right size to look cute and be appropriate for a chick. Using mid pale tones of brown, I fill in the areas that are slightly darker and leave just a touch of light reflected off the top of the beak. The downy feathers on the chick's head have patterns. We've got the base layer of light colours and now by splaying the brush and dipping it in the darker brown, we can put in the little flecks of other colours to make that feathery pattern that camouflages the bird so well in the undergrowth. These layers have to be built up patiently. The paper is still a little damp, so as they absorb in, more layers can be put and patterns can be created. Splaying the brush out is not something everyone likes to do. There are fan brushes that can be used instead to help with this technique. As partridge chicks grow, they develop banded feathers that all contribute to the camouflage and safety of the baby birds. These can be painted on using the same dark brown and the splayed brush. It's a process of building up those layers, developing the patterns, and here is a little slow motion to show the exact short, sharp movement that helps to build up the patterns. As we move towards the head, there are three darker marks, one of which is the area of the ear. Some other darker marks perhaps are there to break up the shape of the bird and add to the camouflage. The downy feathers on the tummy are very fluffy indeed and do not go in a particular direction. So once the brush is splayed, a very, very light pale brown that's darker than the wash beneath can be used to convey the sense of fluffy, non-directional downy feathers. Once that's completed, the small brush can be used to add extra details, shadows, highlights and patterns and markings to really capture that 
feathery patterned look. Using the fine brush and a pale pinky brown, I draw in the legs. Now remember before I explained that these birds have quite strong legs, but when they are squatting down, much of the leg disappears into the fluffy tummy, just revealing the claws and the feet popping out of that furry chest. Young hatchlings feet tend to be a little bit lighter in colour. So using a pink and brown, I work along the claws and each of the fingers of the feet. Underneath, slightly darker where the shadows would be and on the top, slightly lighter with little ridges along them where there are creases in the skin. Now for the eye with the very fine brush and a black, testing out the fine point of this brush before going straight in to mark the outline of the eye. It's important that the base paper is dry. I would have left it for at least an hour. Sometimes I even leave it overnight to be sure that the base is dry because the eye itself needs to be crisp and clear. You don't want fuzzy edges along there. I always think of the eye as a bit of a lemon shape and that helps guide me. A sort of oval with little points coming out at either end. To capture that beady black eye, we need to show where the highlights are. So I draw around the shape of the highlights and colour the rest in black with the finest brush I have. To create the eyelid, I follow the shape of the eye round, leaving a very thin gap so that there's a thin black line going above and below the eye. The next step is to prevent the eye from looking too stark and overdramatic. We need to bring in the fluffy feathers that are around it. So a splayed brush with a pale brown and short sharp movements bring in the elements of fluff around the eyes to make it look much more realistic. And what about the downy fluffy feathers along the very edge, the outline of the bird? Using a very pale pinky brown and the finest brush splayed at the edges, I managed to pull out little short sharp lines that give the semblance of down, of a young baby bird.
using white and the same technique will create a sense of fuzziness and add a layer of softness so that any of the darker marks that are underneath will be fuzzed over and add to the fluffiness of the bird. Adding contrast to a painting can really make the right things stand out and can add the finishing touches, particularly to watercolour, which tends to dry a bit faint. Here I'm adding some well-chosen darker brown marks around the eye to give it more definition. And I'm also adding small darker marks of quite heavy brown in specific places to bring that contrast back and really define certain areas of this chick that need to stand out more. Continue this process using a variety of browns that are much darker over the body, constantly looking back at any reference images or the bird itself to check that these little darker marks and patterns are accurate. I hope you've absolutely loved watching this little chick painting develop. I thought I'd share with you an image of him with more grown-up feathers. His name was Beanie, by the way, and he had a very happy time with me until I passed him on to someone who has much more experience looking after birds and who had a lovely outdoor area for him to run about in. Do check out my other artwork on Instagram and Facebook at Nash Henkel Art and leave me a comment in the comments below if this resonated with you.